welcome, welcome, welcome. So we've been talking about the negative mind for the last month. In the month of June, we really tackled the concept of the negative mind. And I, I've been meditating um, in the last week about this concept that I watch in my clients sometimes, which is when we have a trauma background or a lineage karma of a certain pattern, we may, let's just say, surrender too soon to the lineage pattern. And we may spiritually bypass by saying, well, maybe it wasn't meant to be that I was supposed to have a partner in life, or maybe it wasn't meant to be that I wouldn't have a child, or maybe it wasn't meant to be that I'd be a successful coach or be a spiritual instrument in this world. I can't tell you how many times I hear that, that spiritually bypassed statement and my job in that statement is to truly discern, is this a statement of surrender to what is, which is a really valid aspect of our spiritual path, right? Like, oh, my, I wanted my kid to do this and my kid did this and I surrender because they have free will, right? That's a, that's a really good surrender. Um, but even in that, having had a senior overachiever at the end of her senior year who was like flying off the rails, there was a surrender. And then there was what effort or support or drive or striving, what extra, what extra thing do I need to do to take inspired action here? And that's the piece that I've been really playing with. So when a client says, maybe it wasn't meant to be that I'd have a partner, or maybe it wasn't meant to be that I was supposed to be a successful coach. Oh, my ears perk up. Mm -hmm. Maybe, or maybe not, <laughs> because it's not my, my job to determine someone else's truth. It's your job to determine your truth, but it's my job to challenge when I hear fear or hopelessness or a surrender too soon. So this, this, maybe it wasn't meant to be, let's take the person that comes in and was, was trying to be a coach, but just couldn't get their coaching offer off the ground or someone who wanted to meet their life partner and just was running into barrier after barrier. What I have found is the sweet spot between surrender and striving. Surrender and striving. It's like the yin and the yang. The problem that I often see, and I've been talking about this a lot lately because I train a lot of healers and coach or coaches, is either I'm striving or I'm just stopping. And I call that surrender. So it's like six steps forward, five steps back. Six steps forward, five steps back, right? So it's like the foot on the gas, the foot on the brake, the foot on the gas, the foot on the brake. And that's not what I'm talking about when I talk about finding that perfect sweet spot of surrender and striving. The sweet spot of surrender and striving is they're happening at the same time so authentically. So what does that look like? I'll just share my personal work. And it's one that hits a subject matter that a lot of people can get lost in the subject matter. So I urge you to look at the process I'm showing you rather than the subject matter, because I don't want you to get lost projecting into the subject matter. So I start hitting menopause. And the way I was eating before is the same. And I gained 10 pounds. Okay. This is last year. So I start praying about that and I start saying, okay, I'm in menopause. I might be being given a new body. Divine, do I surrender or do I strive? What do I do here? Do I just say, okay, I've seen the Italians in my family and what they look like after menopause. Is this what I'm surrendering to? Do I surrender 
or do I strive? Meaning strive, meaning make some changes, go further. I'm already gluten-free, dairy-free, eating only two times a day. Like I was pretty clean eating, right? So what do I do? And what I do is I take it into a year or two of introspection and listening and exploring me partnered with my higher consciousness. And so there's a surrender of my of my pitta body into vata stage of life. There's a surrender. And then there's the listening of where does the striving happen? So instead of going at it with will and force, the strive that comes with the surrender is a flow of listening and efforting and listening and efforting and letting go and walking forward with inspired action. There's a partnership with self rather than an override or a, eh, who cares, pass the chips. <laughs> pass the cheese actually is what happened. <laughs> Okay. So with that, it's, a, it's been a two-year exploration. At first I forced, I went keto. I'm going to do this and see what I can get out of this. And then I let go fully and said, okay, that's stupid. And I gained the 10 pounds until I found that perfect balance of listening to my body and surrendering to what's happening and striving and listening. And it's a slower, more intuitive process. Now let's take it off of body because I know we all get lost on that and take it into my business. At the beginning of my business, I was like really working hard and pushing, 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 pushing and crying at the end of the day because of how hard I was working. And I had the option to just be like, you know what, screw it. Maybe this is too much work or too much for me. And then the blend happened when I woke up and every day I'm looking at how do I build this work in the world? Increments every day. What is my inspired action? How, what is my destination vibration? What am I inspired working on and calling out? What vibration am I building in my body? What efforting must I do in order for that to come to fruition? What's my inspired action? And then how do I let go and say, you know what, divine, you take over while still taking action? Surrender, striving finding that perfect balance between letting go and letting the divine really orchestrate flow in my life while also holding the vision. So part of the striving is not letting go of the vision in the space of surrender, not making up the stories of it wasn't meant to be, or maybe I shouldn't or whatever. And really letting what is hard be hard. The truth is running a coaching business is hard. The truth is keeping my body at a space between what my body's doing and what I want is hard for me. It's not easy or straightforward with a history of food addiction and eating disorder. It's not easy. So what does it look like to surrender into the flow of the divine assistance? It's not letting go of my dream or my desire. The surrender is not saying, fuck it. The surrender is holding the vision and letting go of the need to know or the way, the specific path or the specific thing or even what the end result is going to look like. The surrender is saying, I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the executive function. Yet I trust and I hold the vision and I let this go. 
into the hands of the divine. So surrender is usually a very daunting experience for people because they think that they're surrendering it into the abyss. No, we're surrendering it to source. We're surrendering it to our highest consciousness. We're not surrendering the vision or the desire. We're surrendering the current resistance to the not knowing or the feeling inadequate or feeling like I'm not enough. Do you see the difference? So the surrender is of the ego resistance, the imposter syndrome, the I don't know the right way. I don't know the perfect balance. Not the goal. So when the person comes in who really wants a partner and says, oh, I guess it's not in the cards for me this lifetime. I'm looking at them saying, what's your desire? What does your soul want? Your soul wants partnership? Okay. You may be swimming upstream against your family lineage, karma. Your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother had relationship issues, right? So 90% of the karma and the resistance we have is lineage karma. It's not, it's not like we did something bad this lifetime and therefore we don't deserve what we want. Much of what we need to transmute is lineage karma. It's not even ours. It's just handed down to us. And we're the light workers here to transform the lineage. We're the light workers who are awake enough to say, oh, I don't need to take this suitcase on, this baggage on if I don't want to. But I will tell you from my own personal experience, paving a brand new lineage pathway is like plowing five feet of snow. Have you ever pushed a snowblower? Two inches is very different than two feet, right? You need to push and go through that pathway. And then you have to take another round because snow all fell in. You have to push and create that pathway. And it takes maybe five times down that pathway with force and strength, fortitude and resilience to pave that pathway. And then every snowfall, every pain body, every bit of interference energy, every contrast, every family lineage law that shows up in your way needs that same consistent plowing of the pathway. Striving. That's where this young aspect comes in. It's not just one plow down the path and I'm entitled for the thing that I want to show up consistently. It doesn't work that way. It's taking a plow, taking that snowblower down the path every damn day, building the neurosynaptic patterns in your brain building the neurochemistry in your body, sustaining the neurochemistry, building the coherence within the heart, creating the energetic infrastructure, the destination vibration in your field to be able to support that pathway, training your brain and your mind and your thoughts to support that pathway. Dealing with the weather, the interference, the pain body that shows up, that throws the snow back into the pathway, plowing the pathway again, and really letting your life's work be the plowing of that pathway until the pathway sustains itself, which may take two months or two years or two decades. But guess what? Two decades is shorter than two lifetimes, if you believe in multiple lifetimes. Two decades of work here is worth it for your children's lineage karma and your grandchildren's lineage karma. So we're doing seven generations worth of lineage karma clearing. And what that means is showing up in the space of 
I deserve a partner. It's not in my lineage cards, but damn it, it's going to show up. They're going to show up. I trust that the job or the financial security or the close connection or the life purpose work being profitable or the liking of my body. I trust that that's going to show up. In every day, I'm going to build every layer of myself into that feeling that it's already shown up in my life. And I'm going to take action as if it has shown up in my life. And I will surrender and I'll do forgiveness work. And I'll hand it over to the divine. This is the surrender. And I'll listen for guidance. If I'm getting it, I'm going in the wrong direction. And I'll keep receiving and receiving and receiving. So the left arm, the yin aspect of ourself is receiving. If we're just efforting without really bringing in the spiritual wisdom, the guidance, the self-care, the self-love. That nourishment is our surrender. So we're finding the sweet spot between the surrender and the ease and the letting go and the handing it over and the loving myself in the process being okay with what is right now, that's the surrender. While simultaneously holding the vision of being a successful coach, of being a body weight that feels good in my body, of being in partnership when I haven't had a partner in 10 years. I'm willing to be okay with what is alone I love myself alone and I'm holding the vision and calling that person to me and feeling deserving enough for that person to show up. If you're running a business, it's the same thing. I'm okay with where I'm at and I'm calling my clients to me. I'm sending that beam out to the world. I'm ready to help. I love you. I'm here and I'm trusting that they're going to show up and I'm doing inspired action building my Facebook ads. I'm posting on social media. I'm sending out emails. I'm getting vulnerable. And then I'm surrendering. I'm doing both. And I'm trusting. And I'm holding the vision. So that we're never spiritually bypassing our failures and our hopelessness and tying them up in a bow as, well, this is my lot in life. I surrender. This is what's supposed to be. Because the path of awakening, the path of enlightenment is not a passive process. I, I very regularly hand my work over the divine. And this, this long weekend, I had some great inner spiritual time. And I was like, okay, you still want me doing what I'm doing? Is this still in alignment? Is this still working? Is this good? Are we doing, am I doing what my heart consciousness wants? And I got the clear answer that everything I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing structure, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But everything I'm doing is just to awaken the planet in the facilitation of my own enlightenment process. So it really, I could just be teaching violet flame all day. I'll still be awakening the planet. So the complexity through which I'm doing my life purpose is up to me. I can effort. If you know me, I'm pizza. I'm working six days a week on my work. But I can also achieve that same vision with effortlessness if I choose. 
but I'm like a dog that needs a bone to chew on. I'll go chew on my kids' lives if I'm focused too much on them. So I need to try to focus on something constructive. <laughs> so let's go into a short centering where you can feel what it's like to have your foot on the gas and the brake at the same time, such that the car analogy doesn't work. It's more of like a paddle boat. <laughs> So instead of the stop start, it's a paddle boat or it's a bike where both are ebbing and flowing at the same time, where we can live in that space of surrender and allowing and receiving and nourishing and visioning and efforting and striving. But the gas and the brakes doesn't work. It's a very slow process, the six, six steps forward, five steps back. And that's, those of you who have done my level one work, that's where our daily practices are absolutely critical to keep ourselves in a space of neutrality and heart consciousness. So we're not personalizing every failure. So we're not hitting our pain bodies. So we're not dumping into a trauma packet and getting stuck there. We're just continuing in that neutral space, that peaceful space. Okay, so let's go into a, a centering just to bring this into practicality. If you'll breathe into your upper belly and your back. Nice deep breath into your heart. Let your belly expand with your breath and slowly exhale through your mouth. Another deep breath here. Connecting into that violet consuming flame within your heart. It's always there. We're just amplifying that violet flame. So as you breathe in, exhale and fan the flame and send it down your spine, tailbone, legs, and feet into the core of the earth. <sighs> Inhaling from the core of the earth. <sighs> through the spine into the heart. And now exhale through the upper spine, neck, through the top of the head, sending a connection, a violet flame, through the upper chakras to source. <sighs> Inhaling from source, through the crown, through the pineal, into the heart. And now exhale from the heart and expand into the energy field around you, filling that bubble with that violet fire, with that white light. <sighs> Sealing off your field. And as you breathe into your heart now, if you will, just connect into the space of where you've given up your dreams, your desires, where you've spiritually bypassed and shrugged your shoulders and said, well, maybe it wasn't meant to be. when your soul knew that that wasn't your truth. And as you breathe into your heart, allow yourself to cultivate that vision or that desire that's been in start and stop mode within yourself. And see if you can commit to it as inevitable. It's not just a dream that you hope will come true. It's your soul's divine blueprint. See if you can connect with your soul's divine blueprint. 
whether it's partnership or being at peace with your body or living your life purposefully. And as you feel into your soul's desire, if you can really sense that it's not just your soul's want list, This was etched into your blueprint. And that's why this desire hasn't gone away. So as you feel that, I don't know about you, but I feel it deep within my cells, in my DNA. It's coded into our DNA. Now, we may have misinterpreted it. We might have thought, oh, I need to make 100K a year coaching. That's what my DNA says. And in fact, the DNA may simply say, go touch as many people's lives as possible every day. So see if you can come back to the essence of your soul's divine blueprint encoded deeply within the spiritual DNA, that which the scientific field has labeled junk DNA. And as you tap into your cellular structure, into that spiritual DNA that has the codes of your soul's divine blueprint, Just see if you can tap into that treasure box with the map. You may not be able to see it or know it, but set the intention to go into those DNA codes. Ask your soul and your perfect body blueprint to release the codes within your DNA. I am, say this with me, I am my I am presence, releasing the codes for my own awakening and enlightenment. I, I am my I am in presence, releasing the codes for my own awakening and enlightenment process. Just feel it start to unfold or unpack. You may not know what it means or what it says or what it looks like, but just know that you activated you just tapped into the field of your soul's divine blueprint. And if you have a visual or a sense of what that is, aside from your own awakening and enlightenment, see if you can feel that there's nothing you actually have to do other than be the light that you already are. Feel the surrender of that, the effortlessness. Oh, I just have to release the light from my DNA and be the light. Just need to be the light, see the light. And as you feel that, open, even though you don't know what that means, you might not understand that. Surrender into not knowing. And as your soul's divine blueprint, it's like 
a set of blueprints you're unfolding, the big piece of paper as it starts to unfold within you. Just allow from that space within your heart, the vision, the vision of you fully activated in your soul's divine blueprint. like a scene that takes some time to build. Be patient. As you breathe into it, as you blow that sacred white light of ascension, as you breathe the white light into your soul's divine blueprint, just allow yourself to continue envisioning more practically what this looks like with respect to that issue that you came into this meditation with. Your partnership, your relationship to your body, your relationship to your life's work. Allow it to come through in a new way. Without your mind, your thoughts on it. Without analyzing it, just let it be and let it take root. Like these seeds are planting and growing roots, sprouting. You're receiving and listening and surrendering to the divine inspiration from the codes of your soul's blueprint. As you breathe into your heart and feel the sense of love and gratitude, you're watering that soul's divine blueprint with your heart, with your love, with the joy within your heart. So just sit in your heart as these seeds are planted and sprouting. in this space of love. And if you will, ask for a next step that you can strive and put effort and in inspired action divine show me my next step here what do you want me to do next higher consciousness show me You may want to see the entire big picture, but all you need really is your next step. My guides are pretty fiery, so I just got three next steps.
you can pause the recording and just wait until you can get some guidance and then write that guidance down because you'll forget it pretty quickly when you come out of this state. Once you've received that guidance, receive that next step as a sacred blessing, as like a covenant. I don't even know what the word covenant means, as a covenant, as a contract that you're committing to your higher self. It's not about your ego and what your ego wants. It's really your sacred next step to your soul's divine blueprint in action. It's not about unworthiness or whether I'm good enough or whether they'll like me. It's really just about an agreement to a sacred contract. So as you write down your next step, Hold it like you've just been given the most sacred gift. Write it down. Post it, note it somewhere. Like you're a servant to the divine and the divine said, I'd like a cup of tea. And you're like, of course, I'll get you a cup of tea. This is no different. Your inner source just said, go do this. So if you will, just bow to your soul's blueprint, if you have a vision of that. Bow, if you will, to your divine source, to your higher consciousness. And now, if you will, come back into the surrender and striving. Come back into that space of now you have received The striving is based on that which you received. You only take orders from your soul and you are always sure to follow through on those orders. No matter what shows up, Holding this vision, I'm holding this vision with you. My soul holds this vision of your blueprint with you. I truly do. We can seal this together by saying, and so it is done.